is I didn't think I was going to meet a stranger. He has been charged with seven counts of first degree murder. He had a, he was a stalker, he stalked men. Put the hood over my head, the duct tape over my eyes, and handcuff me to the bed. What a story it was. I think it's, I was next is probably a more accurate phrasing. But if somebody's going to survive and say, look at me and listen to my story, then the right guy. I definitely believe Sean was going to be uh, the next victim. When it comes to the human spirit, you know, it's pretty strong, repairable, and resilient. Okay, well, I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're, here. Here. I'm glad you're alive. Did you hear there's a serial killer in the neighborhood? Hi, hi, Bill. Hi, uh, Tammy. Hi, Craig. Uh, hi, Steve. Hi, hi. Sin, uh, for, for for coming to my show again. And uh, firstly, congratulations to the entire team for uh, all the achievements. Uh, after a long time, I'm seeing all you. Long back, I have seen you. Uh, now, uh, I can see all the achievements that uh, uh, your project got. Congratulations, first. Thank you. Thanks. India Thanks. has certainly been one of our biggest supporters, so... Thank you. So, uh, starting with the bill, uh, how how you are enjoying this success? And uh, I can see you are attending a, a lot of festivals. Yes, it has uh, taken off. I guess since the last time we talked to you, we were not even in our festival uh, run. It hasn't stopped since maybe about December. It's been pretty steady for us. This is our last big month um, for it. We have a couple of uh, online award ceremonies coming up this month and then I think there's one in June and um, those are something new we just did one last couple of weeks ago out of Miami uh, I think Sean and Steve Ronick Craig was there and um, that was our first online award show ever for this and I mean everything is virtual this year with the festival so the whole game has changed because of COVID. So this is the first project and how, uh, you know, have you ever thought when, when you took the decision uh, to make this project uh, real? So have you ever thought that uh, you are going to come into uh, this uh, situation that you are in now? No, not me. I never thought so. <laughs> I don't know if anyone, I don't know what everyone else, did you, anyone have an inkling it was going to take off like this? Yeah. Considering where it started, uh, for me, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. 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 I remember when we received our first three accolade awards and uh, Billy and I having a conversation and it was incredible to have our first awards that we won and it was hard to believe it was exciting and I remember being so grateful saying to Billy, if we don't even get any more, I'm still going to be so thrilled. But who would have thought this many later that we're still sitting here saying, oh, I, I can't believe it. And I know. we're so grateful and it is humbling. So I can see uh, uh, in the, when, when we uh, had exchanged uh, words about it uh, before also, uh, the project was like, completely raw it was real it, mm -hmm. it's a real story that uh, you have projected you know scene was amazing you know even the people who watched in india uh, the trailer i have shown to some of uh, people who are connected with me they felt like even the steve did fantastic job the music okay. was amazing the, the 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 music he's he's an amazing uh, musician i can understand that yes he is <laughs> You can take this, Steve. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what else to say? So, Craig, uh, so what is your, how is your experience? How you are enjoying and uh, uh, how you are uh, uh, experiencing the present? It's, I mean, it's been really good. Um, there's, you know, we're, we're uh, I'll let Billy tell you more about, you know, where there's, there's some other projects that we've got coming forward, um, you know, and, and it's, it's, you know, there's been some good networking going on from it. I'm finding that um, you know we're definitely. Um, I'm working on a, a, 
another film now that's um so you know that so that's good i mean you know it's it's uh, uh good things are coming out of it and you know i mean I, i'm i'm glad that um i did it and i'm glad that you know i got to take some around and that we're all working together i think that's really cool yeah me too so see uh for what what how is your feeling now you're the main character <laughs> um, <laughs> uh the ones that the ones for original story kind of freaked me out a little bit because it's billy says in the film it's my life like <laughs> the original story is my life so when we get those I, it's kind of interesting um i'm just glad that my story is getting out there and it's the way it's presented is touching people like it's moving them and that's um and i hope they're learning from my mistakes and from my successes so that's all i so i am one <laughs> <laughs> So what's the next uh, how it uh, impacted you and uh, is there any change after you uh, being with uh, uh, you know uh, with this story after making it visual are you looking at kind of a star power thing if he's getting recognized going down the street and stuff yet no your story oh, came okay. now everybody is uh, uh, knowing you your story is out now everybody is watching you everybody is knowing what happened in your life so how you feeling um that's it's going to be hard. i think the the that's about to come even bigger once the um, distribution deal is penned um and then i'll start to get back to you on that one because uh, it, it could be uh you know there could be backlash from the local community the um there could be uh, so much support at that point that it just overwhelms me emotionally and it's is that last push over the finish line for feeling whole again i mean, it's it's we're on the precipice of something very exciting and uh i'm looking forward to it so steve uh what is, what are your words about it me yeah <laughs> Um, the uh, uh, well, I mean, it's it's you know, I mean, uh, it, I think that um, Sean, you know, is 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 very brave for doing this and pulling this stuff, you know, putting his story out there because there's there's a lot of things in it that you know that um, I think a lot of people would want to you know maybe keep private, um, and I think that it's it's you know I I I, I applaud you know his his uh, openness and and his willingness to kind of be out there and and help people but um i think that it's you know it, it's uh i i just have to try and stay positive about it i hope that all the you know all all the you know the the notices are good right you know and that, that everything is going to be um you know good because i because i know that he's a good person and i know that he's got you know uh, good reasons for doing this so so tammy you have to say you know you are seeing now uh, the best film trailer the best producer bill and the best producer uh you so how how is your feeling you are getting too many awards <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this is all like obviously a group effort and i'm just so proud that i was on this team and one thing that was important in my eyes and i know for sean and everybody is that hopefully we can help other people through sean's story thank goodness he had you know he was brave enough to come out and tell us everything that happened and you know felt comfortable enough with me especially interviewing him that he could say exactly you know all his feelings and and not feel judged and which gave him a comfort i believe in being able to finish this project saying everything that was deep within him and hopefully we can inspire other people through Sean that they know that no matter what you experience in life there are people out there that care and that there is a way to heal and whether that's through filming a documentary as Sean did but people viewing it um i just hope that it helps so many out there to know that there is hope after things happen that are so negative and i really hope that Sean's story inspires people to um help others as well not just healing but to go out and help others Uh, what do you think that that uh, that is there in the in the project that made uh, you to earn whatever you have you earn today 
Um, all the awards that we've won, I believe it was, um, I, I don't really know for sure. I'm just so grateful for everything, but I believe the story had so much depth and the way that it was told. I feel that a healing journey is something that is inspiring, especially during COVID. And I do believe people could relate to it. And obviously, um, there's you know, obviously our director did an incredible job, our producer, uh, our original score, and Sean. You know, I just think it was a collaborative effort that just um, that we all connected and that the story is something that other people are connecting with as well. So, Craig, so, Craig, you have to say uh, the best director. Yeah, that's so good. So, yeah. I'm just enjoying the ride. Um, you know, whatever awards come, they come. But um, I'm happy with where we are with the documentary. And even if we didn't win any awards, uh, it's a great documentary and it's a great story. And there's a lot of passion that comes through the documentary. And I think that's one reason why it's maybe resonating with a lot of people is I think they see that passion in, in the film. Thank you. So Bill, uh, was I next? What is next? What mm -hmm. is next? We've got a few things cooking right now. We can't say a whole heck of a lot yet, but there is another project we have been signed on for. We've been approached by a few groups and different people, or um, one or two or three or more. And um, it's taken a while to just kind of filter out where we wanted to go next. Where we're going to stick with the documentary, or we're going to do a series, you know, stuff like that. So we have signed on with um, an organization, a group of people that are going to be doing a, a series with us. We can't say too much about it. We've got to get the name locked down and everything tightened. But um, it's coming up soon. But there should be some news coming out within the month, I imagine. We're going to finish this one off. May is our last big heavy run in festivals. And then after that, we're going to look at a negotiation uh, deal for distributorship soon. Very soon, within a month, I imagine that'll be on. So you have a screening on the 25th of this month? Yes. Screening is um, at Mental Healthy fit.org and it's going to be at nine o'clock may 25th eastern standard time uh, seven o'clock mountain standard time because it's coming out of salt lake city and um, that's going to be a, a one-shot screening there and then we've got another couple of screenings coming up in the next month and one way off in november out of toronto so there's about four or five screenings coming and that's really good you want to be able to show um, you know, your distributor that there's an interest in making top 24, top 30 selections for a festival. That weighs a lot when you're bringing that through the door for sale. So what, what is the thing that is, what is the point which is making that uh, people to get into this? You know, you are approaching people with what you made. So what is the thing that that is attracting or that is connect, that is very connected with this story? I think when I asked Sean about this the very first time. I, he might not have believed it when I said people are fascinated about what you were thinking, what you were doing that. Everything about him as the person involved with that encounter, you know, I know the whole village, the community, the gay community that we live in here in Toronto wanted to know everything about it. And I said, I had a lot of faith that that would carry over to the whole story. And I said, Sean, I think that you're going to be surprised to see how many people wanted to know what you were thinking. How did you heal from this? What did you have to go through? All of those relatables. I think you're going to find uh, people are just fascinated. I was fascinated, you know, even though I didn't recognize him for a while, I was still fascinated by the person who escaped. And it just, I, I, I thought I can't be out here alone on this. Everyone's got to wonder what he went through. And I'm pretty sure that's why it's held up. It, you're right, he went into all the deep stuff and didn't hold back. And now we've got a really articulate story about his life pre and post encounter. So I think very relatable and gives people the stuff that they want to know about him, not so much the sensationalizing the story and all that gory stuff. They want to know how he's doing. That's a big thing. So Sean, uh, your story is now connecting and people are getting, uh, uh, people are, are telling something about uh, 
uh, that you experienced. So what do you feel about this? Um, I, the most important thing was um, there was the two hours of my life that was spent with that man that caused then a domino effect to many things. And I don't think people really, unless this had come out, um, I don't think they would have realized all the pitfalls and the pain and the things that came out of how other people reacted to to my, to those two hours. Because the two hours is just a very small, short period of time, and it's changed my life. It's, it was... Uh, it's it's odd that your whole life can pinnacle like 180. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. On one tiny event. Yeah. And I don't so Steve. So. Yeah, yeah. So Steve, uh, what uh, when when you uh, listen to this story? So what? It is a pure emotion, right? So have you ever thought that uh, uh, you know the the emotion, the real story? that uh, you hear that you make uh, people to connect with it with the sound that you have yeah like i mean it, it's you know when all the stuff that sean's gone through right you know um to a certain degree i've i've been there for so so you know so when he has you know night terrors and you know remembers a lot of these things that have happened right you know and suffers you know from the ptsd and all that stuff um, I'm, you know, I'm, I get to be there for that, right? Which, which is, which is good. Um, but it's also, you know, it, 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 it's indicative of, you know, of, of the amount of trauma that's been, you know, um, uh, given to him from this whole process, which a lot of people don't see. So I do see that, and and I think, um, you know, if if possible, I think I tried to work that into the music in a way. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's always easier to write stuff that that's close to you, right? You know, that, that's because the, 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 you know, the, the emotional sort of feedback is there really. Um, but, um, but I mean, you know, yeah, I have my own things that I, you know, that I, certainly for, you know, some of the scarier pieces of music, right? You know, I, I relied on, on some of my own, you know, kind of, uh, you know, horror about, you know, the way that, the way that this kind of worked out. And, you know, and I mean, the big thing for me was I always just, just flashed on, you know, if, if he had succeeded, um, uh, you know, I would just come home from the work to an empty house, right? You know, and just never see Sean again, and that would be really hard, right? You know, not knowing, and you know, and all that stuff, and then you know, maybe knowing or not, right? You know, but I mean, it's it's you know, that that's that's where a lot of that stuff came from. So yeah, certainly the certainly the, the soundtrack um, to the film has a lot of my own, you know, you know, guts in there, right? So. So Tommy, you last know. time when we had chat, uh, you said you said a lot uh, when uh, what you felt when you listened to the story and what made you to uh, make it possible. So you said now it is completely different. You know, uh, after all these festivals, the situation is completely different, right? So before and after, what is your feeling? Prior to filming and now. Yeah. What you're asking prior to filming, um, I remember flying my first flight to Toronto and I remember looking out the window and thinking ah, if Sean doesn't connect with me it's not going to work because he needs to feel really comfortable and feel that he can trust in the person that's interviewing him and uh, I knew the second time that we talked it, the same day that he that we connected and Sean felt comfortable with me I just had that gut feeling and to see the documentary being filmed um, and Sean's um, his the path throughout the documentary with his emotions, his feelings, and him also trying to educate people as far as internet dating. Um, I just throughout the whole process, it was emotional for me as well. I remember on set one day I couldn't stop crying, and <laughs> because I have compassion for people, and that is why I love to interview. It's it's um. I connect with people on a, a certain level, as you know, aside what that feels like. Um, and then to be where we are today with all of these awards, it just it just um, gives me so much pride to know that after it's all done and over with, that I have seen Sean grow during the time that we were filming, and to see where he's sitting today and having you know been through that, I can see that he's 
to a level where he feels a little more confident about going out. And I think he has some pride. You can correct me, Sean, that this is done so well and that um, he's proud of, of the steps that he's walked throughout this process. And I think for me, that's what means so much to me is Sean and his healing and for Steve as well. I mean, that's Sean's partner. And so I think the awards that we've won all over the world really go to the story that's between Sean and Steve. And I'm just so grateful that um, they supported one another and have the courage to do this. And so I can't be, um, I'm overwhelmed with such great emotion that we as a group have come this far and that it's been recognized throughout the film festivals and Billy can say the number that we've received and it's overwhelming. So I really want Sean and Steve to know that when I look at those trophies, that's what I see. I see them and the story. It's going to make me cry because I'm emotional about it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started. I <laughs> what a works of a girl. Who would have thought we'd be here at this I know. Point, you know? And oh. there's two sides to that because we're so close. I mean, you know, I've known Sean for a long time, so the friendships goes way back. And I get asked a lot of those questions that everyone wants to know now. How did you think it was going to win this? It, all, it was, and I think Craig said it, Steve has said it, it was never about the awards for us. Don't get me wrong. It's nice to have your work honored and, and valued on any level from anybody. But we did this number one to help Sean heal and give him that voice um, and it was his platform to have his story taken out to the masses because he never got that chance in court you know a lot of it added up but it was a really personal journey for us five here and Jameson he's not around but he was with us for production and um so you know we're we're not just a company that's working with a person off in the distance you know we're all part of this together. So it's hard to separate that. You know, there was a time I felt almost guilty for celebrating the highs because of everything Sean went through. I thought, wow, you've survived a, an encounter with a serial killer. That's the hard part. And it almost felt different or weird to be celebrating happiness on something that was so bad. But you have to look at the big picture and what it brought together and his steps through it to heal. That's, you know, we can smile about it now, but there was a time I felt guilty about that for a minute just because he went through so much. Um, but it's leveled off. We're OK with it. I think he knows that we're not just here to win awards and get the story. We're really looking at his well-being first and foremost. Absolutely. Yeah, that is what that is what my next question is the the human the human thing that is there in your hearts in Tammy and you uh, the the selection the you deciding to make it uh, a a visual thing and to show a shows that shows that uh, what kind of thinking that you have selecting to uh, selecting this story and make this happen you know until unless you feel very emotional until unless you feel very intense about uh, Sean's uh, story you you wouldn't do whatever you did and the awards that you got I agree I, I, I agree with you 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 don't uh, uh, you are not looking for the awards you you are wanting to create something which is very real and uh, that is the reflection that is the uh, that is the secondary thing and uh, as, a, as a third person as an observer that is a big thing for us for, for, for me but for you I'm sure I can understand what you, what was your intention behind uh, making it? Absolutely, so, and I think being a mother um, has given me uh, all of this insight as to you know watching uh, babies grow into human beings. Uh, that part of being a mother sort of transformed me. I was always a kind person, but transformed me into a person with a really big heart, and so. Um, and great love for people. I've always loved people, but being a mother transformed me even more. So when this story came up about Sean, like I, I almost feel like when I get teary is he's a part of me now, like I'm mothering him almost. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just, and every project I've done or any interview that I've done, I've always cared deeply for the person I was interviewing, but this is a totally different level. To meet somebody that's been through something so tragic 
And, um, you know, to see him sitting there today and knowing that he's healed like a bit from the documentary gives me great joy. But also working with Craig, who I've been working with for years, to see him, you know, get what he deserves is like overwhelming for me. As well as Billy, I remember meeting Billy in Bar River at 13 years old. And Billy's been through ups and downs and he deserves this as well. So there's many stories connected within this documentary. And I just think that um, seeing us all evolve together and making a successful documentary is just proof that, um, you know, you can do anything no matter what you've been through in life. And that goes for all five of us because Steve's been through some difficult times as well. Um, but in the end, with all the awards, it's as Billy said, and Sean and, and Craig, we just want really to support Sean and do the best job that we could. And I, like I said before, when I look at the awards, I see Sean and I see Steve and I'm, and I see the three of us and so grateful that we've had an opportunity to finally get a little bit of success and recognition that I think these people that I'm sitting with really deserve. So, Craig, uh, being a captain of the ship and uh, deciding to uh, make uh, the real one and look uh, as as uh, real as possible, I can understand uh, from your perspective, from your point of view, uh, how uh, you were when making this uh, happen while doing the work. So, what was uh, the exact uh, thing that was there in your mind when you are uh, uh, trying to make it? Well, uh, when I first met Sean, I, I mean, in my mind, I, I'm just there as a director of the shoot and, and film a documentary. And, you know, Sean was the subject and he's, he's been through this. So it, there wasn't really a connection between Sean and I at the very first meeting because uh, I had to hear his story. I didn't really I knew the. The story that was sensationalized in the media, but I, I, I didn't know Sean's story. And so the more. Uh, I knew Sean and Steve and the whole story and the whole background and his connection with Billy. And I mean, you could just see why this had to be done. And I was just grateful to be asked to be part of it. And I just used my experience as much as I could to to make it real uh, without it being looking like a polished news item, if you know what I mean, like a news magazine. I didn't want that feel. I wanted it to be organic, and and part of that reason is because we had such a I, I don't want to say a small budget, but we had a tight budget, and you know we had we didn't have the best equipment uh, to work with, and I think that helped. It 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 made it more real that you know we don't have these big giant cameras and microphones and lights and and a hundred people behind the camera making it all come together. It was a very small intimate team uh with the equipment that we were able to to use and um i think it it worked to our benefit i think if we had if we had a bigger budget i don't think i don't think it would have been a, as good a, a documentary we would have lost something in that translation yeah. <clears throat> sometimes there's too much polish if you know what i mean mm -hmm. well and i find it's intimidating for the subject as well um, because even Sean's mother, if we would have went in with a ton of cameras and lights, mm -hmm. she would have been different. Comfort. So right. I do believe sometimes a small, intimate setting and crew is more beneficial, especially mm -hmm. with subjects such as Sean's. I agree. So, like you said, uh, you have uh, Craig. Like you said, you have limited resources and. Uh, uh, you uh, that actually made you to look uh, make it very very good. Yeah, I think that all helped. Uh, again, we didn't have you know those big expensive cameras that you see on movie uh, yeah sets and stuff like that. Uh, you Don't know, let we, him fool you. He's addicted to B-roll. He was out there <laughs> filming on Church Street day yeah. and night. He was walking through Cedars in the morning, <laughs> noon, and night. He had so much stuff on camera. He he really stocked as well for. I mean, it's not like crappy equipment. <laughs> the high end. That's right. Whatever we use works fine, right? And uh, I, and again, I think it all helps with the whole feel of, of the documentary. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, I don't think I would have changed anything of how we filmed it. So that is where uh, your direction skills come comes out, right? So when you when you have everything and making it done is different, and when you have less resources and uh, trying to make it as organic as possible and to sh uh, to create as uh, real as possible, it 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 really shows the interest that you have, uh, the passion that you have on the work. Thank you. So Sean, so. Uh, it's it's not good to talk about awards, uh, you know, uh, uh, for the for the movie with you. But uh, still, uh, how you're feeling? You know, you're you're seeing best director, best story, best uh, producer for the story of yours. So, what is your uh, take on it? I think it's fantastic. I'm very proud of the project. <laughs> I'm proud of every one of them. Um, I have to mention Billy's passion behind the whole project. He, he was the momentum that brought this to, um, without him, there'd be no movie. Um, and when it came down to that, that decision day, when I get, like, just get, said, you got it, it was his passion for it. I believe everything he said, and he's done everything he said, and more. So uh, I knew where he lived, so he knew if he didn't give it to me, I would have drove him crazy. Okay, let's be honest. That's relentless. <laughs> yes, I would have been really. Um, yeah, we definitely very blessed but, that. And he had two passions that um, I, I most uh, that propelled us to the awards. <laughs> like, uh, he, how many? Like, that was a lot of. We're at what? 106 right now. Awards, and we've got 161 laurels, including the award winning and official selection. So that's that is a big I mean, number. That's huge. I think that's it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we're not done yet. There's still about, you know, 20 festivals out there between now and the end of the year that are kind of straggling and closing up. We've got a lot of stuff that if we've won a monthly, now the annual festival part is coming up. So they might see this, you know. I, I apologize to everybody on our social media who's getting bombarded because it's a lot. And I realize that. But when we post, you're kind of posting for the festival more than anything because they want that promotion out there. That puts their their festival's name front and center. And then the awards and the trophies and the certificates, you know, that's their glam package that kind of helps sell their image. But um it's really the festivals why we post. It's not so much that, oh, we, we won, we got to post this. It, you know, they give you an email when you, they announce your awards and they have a link right in there to share on Twitter, share on Facebook. And, you know, they want their stories out there. But again, I apologize because I don't think our friends and family have thought 106 of these were going to fly across their computer yeah. screens in the last few months. It's a lot for everybody to say, congratulations. Well, I've blocked you, so. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. See, so, Bill. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Bill. Uh, so, do you think that you know uh, you did something and uh, you're getting response for the for for that? Do you believe that uh, doing it for the response? Uh, uh, do you think that works? That way of making a documentary. Do you think that works? Definitely. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. Um, I guess going forward. We've learned a lot on this two years. This was my first project, so I feel like I've been in school for the last two years and two months. Everything was a learning curve for me because I had to really catch up. Even if I would hear Craig and Sean and Steve talk, and they'd be, you know, saying, "What's that?" You know, I was just kind of having to play catch up a bit. Um, but I think the approach is always going to be the same. We have to feel it. We're going to have to to do that good job on it. You know, we couldn't really relate. Like I said, if we were doing something about, you know, butterflies in Africa, it would be a really hard stretch for me to feel that passionate about that. Whereas a story that's, you know, part of an ingredient in your life makes it a little easier. But I think we'll always hold that formula going forward. You know, we're, we're going to have to feel it and make sure that we can put our spin on it. That was the whole reason for this. Put the humanity back into this. I said, this is someone's child. This is someone's brother, someone's partner, friend co-worker you know this is not just someone that's stuck in a headline out there in obscurity he affects people's lives and i think we all think like that like it's got to mean something to us so i think we would stay the same 
so everybody in the country i mean everybody in the world uh, are connecting uh, uh, and relating relating this story i think so that the is cool what? thing about our premiere is this is mental health month may is mental health month and with Sean going through ptsd the survivor's guilt and then the victim shaming and all the stuff that people took him through you know with those nasty headlines um i think that it's really cool that we got to our screen at a, a mental health festival and they're partnered with mental health in utah so see it this way has been a really cool connection for us you know so how many languages only in, in english uh, you're going to release it or oh you're getting ahead of the deal i don't know <laughs> we have to, i guess that all comes out you know when we go into i mean we can say the netflix that's who we're kind of looking at and um, as our first contact i imagine if it goes into other countries that's when you'll have to get it in different languages or subtitles or stuff we haven't gone that far yeah. so i don't know it's only in english right now yeah because in india Subject there are a lot of uh, re- uh, religions and a lot of languages if you put this out i'm sure it connects with uh, a lot of uh, people because uh, india is one of the largest movie making industry in the world yes you know it Bollywood that big. i'm sure this kind of uh, the, the the real things if you put it it reaches people not only like tammy said uh it is not only just uh, looking at and uh, just uh, um uh, you know looking for looking movie uh, looking documentary for some time and going it's it's they connect the relate things they 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 know that a person like this from particular uh, part of the world felt like this have experience like this so I like that. Mm-hmm. You see you see it as authentic then is how you yeah. see it sign. Yeah. I remember you said that before the last time we were on your podcast you had mentioned about it had a real story and people from India you said would rather watch the truth than a science fiction and I remember you or I'm paraphrasing but it was something along those lines. So I thought okay I you know I don't know we didn't have time I think to step out of it and say how is everyone else going to receive it we were just hoping for the best but we knew how we saw it. try to keep it Those as authentic and close to the center so crack yes what do you say what do you say about what i said um i don't know <laughs> i don't know if i can add any more than what billy uh, just said but um i don't know i'm lost i'm lost for words it just is really stress but <laughs> because you are you are the maker right you you uh, did this you made this happen right so well, you have to tell this with uh, with the help of everybody here you know like like i say billy sold me on the project and his passion and that was one of the key reasons why i wanted to do it is because i saw how passionate he was about getting the story told and working with me and when of course working with him and he go to it and then of course when i met steve and and john um that just cemented the deal for me cuz you know they're two awesome people great sense of humor you know and which i resonate to i i i love people who have a great sense of humor and i really connect with them and um i think the whole team connected very very quickly and we knew what we wanted to do and what we needed to do and it just happened it just it just happened like that we really didn't argue in 2 years i think everyone kind of saw the story the yeah. same way sean told us how he wanted it done what was not to be done what to respect the victims number one like he was very clear and then it was he left us some creativity to kind of interpret it but you know we're all in our 50s in that club and i think that we look at life pretty similarly and this was just a pretty unified statement i don't think that uh, there was not one of us that sat out there way on our own said no i see it this way craig took the shot at the story first as the director and he was the one that kind of came to me and said this is tricky you've got your and sean's back story here sean and you know the serial killers encounter story and we have to tie that together he did it beautifully he kind of presented it almost on a storyboard format to me when he said 
here's what I'm working with. Here's what I need the narratives to reflect. He was very clear. I, I think because we all understood it well, we spoke the same language. I Going to work for those, it wasn't like work at all. It really wasn't. I have to say it's the first time in my life I've heard people say that and I thought you're full of <laughs> shit, okay? Because it's work. It's work any way you slice it. I've always had that mentality because I've never hit a job that really was such an, uh, I don't know, it just all came together well. I get it now when people say it, if you're doing it right, it doesn't feel like work. I don't mm-hmm. So Sean, uh, well, uh, when you're telling this story to uh, Billy, so when he said uh, this, uh, uh, he will create this visual thing. So what was your thing? You know, have you thought that uh, whatever the story, the characters that uh, who met you, uh, the the intensified emotions that uh, you you experienced and that you saw, and you wanted him to put uh, exactly how it is uh, in the in the project or uh, that is Billy's uh, idea. It was just um, I, there were certain phases of my life. I wanted to show I had a mother, <laughs> like because in the headlines it was like I was hatched in an egg. <laughs> 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 And they didn't know who she was. So I wanted to show the mother. I wanted to show I had friends growing up. I wanted to show my hometown. Um, my prom day. Like the, the people that were chosen for those on-air um, interviews, they were they were current. I thought they were all wonderful. Yeah. Like they all did such a heartfelt job. Um, there was one scene that didn't make it to being filmed. Because and that's only because I was the one with the notes on it, and I was it, that's when I went into the hospital and I, couldn't, I lost my mind. So um, and that that would have shown just that career side of me and like yeah. the 25 year um, career as a uh, with children. And uh, but other than that, like the way it came together was beautiful. Mm. Yeah. So just, what 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 was your feeling? Yeah. 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 Go on. Okay. Um, and I, I was just saying, and not saying his name, and, and having the victims, and squeezing my speech in at the end. Um, I, just so to bring you up to date with uh, what's happened, is there was a report released in Toronto, uh, which was a civil inquiry into the police handling of, of missing persons cases for marginalized communities, and it included the eight victims that were um, uh, part of the MacArthur case. And that afternoon, I was I received an invite on, online into a meeting, which I thought was going to be me and a bunch of people involved in the case being debriefed, but it wasn't. It was me and the chief of the acting chief of police um, apologizing on behalf of the police um, for the, dropping the ball, putting me in danger. If they'd done their job better, it wouldn't have happened. And me, I was sideswiped because I didn't think I was walking into something like that. But uh, it meant the it was like this huge acknowledgement to be validated that way on official record because now there was a written apology from the police that they did not do their job well enough to keep me safe, and they were really sorry. And that nice. Was, I was happy that they did that, Sean. And that was just uh, April 13th of this year, so that was a big. Yep. And the movie is actually was part of the inquiry. We sent a copy to where we the judge. So, it helped. So, Tommy, nice. so, Tommy, you said that uh, there is a lot of uh, human, you know, human connectivity, human emotions that made you to get into this. So, as a woman, as a woman, what do you say about uh, what Sean felt? and his uh, experiences, what you feel, what that uh, people have to know from this documentary, people have to, people will learn from this documentary. Well, I hope that they learn to be more compassionate towards people, no matter, no matter skin color, gender, it doesn't matter, you know, just to be more compassionate because each and every person is, like Billy said, somebody's son, somebody's sister, somebody's wife, somebody's husband, and not to be so judgmental. I think what really bothered me the most through this was Sean being judged 
when they didn't even know him. And I think people have to take a step back and think about things before they speak. And I always remember my parents telling me, um, think before you speak. And I wish more people had that in the back of their minds before they condemn or have any opinions about somebody that they've never met. And um, I think that the community that Sean and Billy and Steve live in, I think that we need to respect that community more, have more compassion for them. And, um, you know, they're no different than what we are. So as a parent, sitting there and seeing the horrible things that were being said to Sean, I thought, if somebody said that about my daughters, I would be totally <laughs> devastated and hurt. And I can't imagine anybody, especially, like I shouldn't say especially a parent, but anybody wanting to judge others when they have not walked their path. And I think, and that's really important to me through this documentary that I hope people can um, think twice before they speak. And I also think that the humanity, we want to put humanity back into this. And I think that we did a really good job doing that. And I think that um, as a whole in the documentary, just to remember we're all humans and everyone's doing the best they can. Um, and so I look at Sean whenever I see him and I'm so happy to see him again today and I see how far he's come. And to know that there's people out there, so that now that we've had the documentary out, I hope there's people out there that see his story differently and have compassion for him and love him like I've grown to love him. And I think that is so healing. And I, I just really hope through the documentary, it's teaching everybody about humanity. Your family members watched it? Actually, uh, mm. not any of my daughters or my stepson. Yeah, gotcha. None of them have watched it. I have um, one sister that has. And um, anyway, I can't wait for them to watch it. And I have to admit, even though we've won so many awards and I'm so proud of it, I'm a little bit nervous about my daughters and my family seeing it because I hope they see it the way that we do. And I don't know if any of you feel the same as I do, a little bit of pressure of the people same. that really matter to me. So anyway, I'm excited for them, but I know I'll be sitting on <laughs> needles and pins, hoping that they love it as much as I do. But I'm sure they will. So any personal experiences of uh, Sean that uh, connected with you, that uh, uh, that that made you that that made you think that that you learn from it, a special qualities or any any special thing from Sean's experience? Well, one thing when I think about it's the quality, but when I think about Sean, I see him, it's um, the very last scene when I hand him the heart. And, and I think the way he laughs and puts his head back and just his eyes, he draws you in with his eyes. And I think it's just the connection and his personality that stand out to me. And knowing that he's a really good person and has a really, really big heart, I that means a lot to me. And so and I feel how as a mother, I almost felt like I could just hug him and mother him and make him feel better. And I hope in some way I did that, Sean. <laughs> and um, I'll always remember his story and I'll always remember the days that I was emotional on set because and I get emotional again because he really went through a lot. And it really bothers me that people will... Um, condemn somebody you know when they don't know them so Sean you will always stand out to me because as a person from your head to your toes you're a good man and you're a good, good man and I'm just so grateful that I had the opportunity to meet you I get emotional again <laughs> <laughs> feelings mutual Ty we've lost you uh oh it's just us again it's just us yeah, 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 yeah. So there you are. It's 11 o'clock. Yeah. It's 11? Yeah. Okay. Yes, Billy, really, uh, at last, uh, at last uh, you, like you said, uh, on 25th, uh, there's a screening of yours. And can you tell more details to my audience and to the world who is uh, watching and listening to this? Yeah, it's through um, um, a Salt Lake City film festival called See It This Way. But they have partnered with Mental Health healthy utah and the site is 
mentalhealthyfit.org. And if you go on there, you can be late to the party. I shouldn't maybe say that, but I'll just let everybody know it's no pressure. It starts at seven o'clock their time, nine o'clock our time here, Eastern Standard Time. And if you go in there, you don't, you can rewind, pause everything. And I checked with Brian Higgins there, the festival director. He's been awesome with us, um, just explaining everything and how it's going to work. And um, you can come in late and it's there for that window of opportunity. As long as you catch it within that two hours, you can start the doc. So it's very easy to navigate through. I logged in and watched a couple of the features in the past couple of weeks. It's been on for the month. Very easy. As soon as you go on there and it's a feature playing, that's really what you see on the screen as soon as you enter the site. So I'll put I'll put the uh, uh, website link in the description of the video and the, and also people can watch this on the screen. Uh, I'll put on the screen they can see the website link. And is this okay, premium perfect. or is the is uh, is is it chargeable? It's free. The festival is covering all of that, so it is free. They sponsored it, so everyone gets you know. I imagine most of our friends and family that are linked up through our social media will catch it, but you know, it depends how, how well and wide received it goes, but anyone can watch it online that night on May 25th, nine o'clock Eastern standard time. May 25th, May 25th, nine o'clock our time, nine o'clock Eastern standard time. EST. Fine. So any, any place from anywhere, from any device, any people, anybody can watch us. That's right. As long as you're on a, on the internet, you can tap into mentalhealthyfit.org, and you've and that's the access to the site. Like I said, as soon as I logged in on uh, last Tuesday for the feature night, it took me right to that. So it wasn't like before when I logged in, you went through the room in this whole virtual tour. It was right there on the screen. So I imagine ours would be like that on Tuesday. So fantastic. I I want you to be uh you know making these kind of. Uh, 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 documentaries and uh, the project which makes people to connect with it and uh, not only for just uh, uh, making it for uh, the professional work it also should be useful somewhere they have to learn something it should be educative like you did uh, you know it show it the, the team itself shows that the the uh, itself shows that everybody are into the emotion not into other things so that is why the reason the, the the awards and the responses that you are getting today I'm, I'm i'm sure in coming days also you're going to make some amazing uh, uh, projects and uh, amazing work uh, and i'm sure a lot of uh, people learn and uh, educate themselves uh, uh, from uh, from the creation that you did uh, that you do thank you thank you so yes. thank you Greg. Uh, thank you tammy <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Sai, for doing such an incredible job and keep going on your journey because I just admire what you've done. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you. Thank you for uh, coming again. Uh, you know, uh, thank uh, you. Thank you, Bill, uh, coming again, accepting my invitation. And, and uh, you're, thank you, you're Sean. Very thank welcome. you, Steve. Thank you. Yeah. We'll catch thank you, Sean. Thank you, Good to see you again, Sai. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Keep going. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.